Welcome to Pioneer Headlines. I'm Nathan Grisham. And I'm Charlie with Bryce on Sports. The mayor of Sumner County's extension of the emergency declaration due to COVID ends tomorrow. The mask mandate expired earlier this month. A nationwide report says that half the country has received at least one COVID shot by now. Health experts still advise everyone to socially distance and wear masks in public until all have been inoculated. The film scene has been ramping up with the release of Godzilla vs. Kong. But just how has film dealt with the current pandemic? Here's Bryce Hardwick with a review. The film scene has changed drastically both inside and outside the industry since the global pandemic that started in early 2020. I was able to speak to Michael Dove, a film professor at Volunteer State Community College, and Ryan Estep, a close friend of mine who works at NCG Cinemas in Gallatin. What would you say has been the biggest change for the film scene because of COVID-19? Well, I think that the film scene has really been pretty profoundly affected. It's such a collaborative sort of industry that it's very difficult to work because uh, it's a lot of people working together to create something. So it makes it very difficult to, uh, to do that under those kinds of conditions. Another change that has occurred is uh, just when it comes to scheduling because uh, the film industry is such a schedule-based industry trying to come together to work very furiously for a short period of time. And so the fact that everything just came to a halt that's had knock-on effects on this sort of scheduling, the producing side of things. It's going to be felt for, for many years to come. Uh, what is the biggest consequence of COVID-19 and how has the film scene suffered from it? I would say the biggest consequence is on the crew members because uh, crew members in films, if you didn't know, are predominantly self-employed. And so to have a, a gap in your work because we've halted for COVID-19 where you're not working at all, can be very difficult for someone who's self-employed. Not to mention the fact that a lot of the apparatus of uh, the state to you know, help people who are out of employment, it's not really geared towards people who are self-employed. It's geared predominantly towards people who have uh, like a salaried position. And so that's been really difficult for them. So how has the turnout been since COVID-19? Um, when it first started, the theater actually completely closed down for about three weeks. And then after that, for a very long period of time, it was pretty much completely dead. But a few weeks ago, with the release of the new Godzilla movie, a movie actually sold out for the very first time since COVID actually started. Are there any preca new precautions taken for guests or employees? There's a sign that says we require masks on the door, but none of the employees actually really enforce that. We have assigned seats. We didn't used to do that, but there's not really spacing out of any kind. And then just very little things like one of the butter machines for popcorn is closed and like every other Coca-Cola machine is closed down and that's pretty much it. Reporting from Volunteer State Community College, this is Bryce Hartwich. Sumner County residents in need can attend a food drive to help feed their families. Christian McGuire checked out the Farmers to Family program at Vol State. Volunteer State Community College located in Gallatin, Tennessee makes it a priority to serve its community. The Farmers to Family Food Distribution is provided by the Vol State Student Encouragement and Support Services and hosted weekly on campus. I spoke with Heather Harper, Manager of Student Encouragement and Support, about their goals in helping students and nearby residents in need. Volunteer State Community College is our community's college, and so for all of our students, all of our students' families, um, even those community members, it's just really important that we support and, and try to make a difference in our community, um, and this is one way we can do it. We know there's people in need. I also chat with Barry Brooks from Plant Operations about distributing food boxes carried from the loading dock to vehicle on the pickup line. We get about anywhere from 1,200 to 60 boxes, which will go to about 650 families to help them around some of the county areas, try to uh, help anybody who needs food. Thanks, it takes several of us to do all this. As they pull up, we load up as many families they have and try to, try to get the best amount of what you Most of all, Sumner County, we do have some other counties that come in, but most of all, we just want to help as many people as we can. Several faculty members at Ball State assist with this event, serving Sumner County as well as the surrounding areas. Reporting from Volunteer State's Loading Dock, I'm Christian McGuire. Have a need to get that paper done? Madison Pippen points us in the right direction for help. 
I sat down with Becky Frank, the Vol State Library Director, to discuss her and the other staff's role here on campus and how it might affect you. My job title is the Director of Library Services and Learning Resources. It's a long title, but it basically means that I get to oversee every bit of the library. And with students, that means I get to help with instruction, um, teaching some of the classes if needed, and working one-on-one -on -one with students when they have research questions, and things like this where I get to just tell people about the library and the amazing resources that we have to offer. How can the students reach out to get help on campus or online? We have help available in person and online. The easiest way to get help is to reach out to librarian at ballstate.edu and they can connect you if you have a specific reference question we can connect you with sources or we can give you directions on how to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the librarian or other options that may be reasonable. If you're on campus and you want to just pop into the library, we're open Monday through Friday right now, 8 to 4.30. Monday through Thursday, we're actually open until 8 p.m. So come on by and uh, there will be a smiling face ready to help. What are the different available study rooms for students on campus? We have a quiet study area. It is essentially supposed to be a silent study area. There are some Mac computers in there as well if you're looking for a Mac computer. We also have group study rooms. Um, they are socially distant, so you can have a, a slightly larger group in there as long as you continue to wear your masks. And we have Zoom booths, which are um, smaller study spaces just for single individuals who may need to participate in an online discussion group or um, their Zoom classes but don't feel that they can do that at home, there is a space here on campus in the library where they can be an active participant in their classes. I'm Madison, here at the Thick Pen Library. Preds fans have been getting a pick-me-up from the pandemic by watching their teams this month. Bryce has more with sports. The Preds have had some up and downs this month, but they've mostly been on an upswing. They're hoping to repeat their latest 5-2 win over the Blackhawks with their next couple of games, with both teams scrapping for a playoff spot. Roman Josie's injury has not been much of a help, though it seems to have inspired the younger players to up their game. That's a plus. They'll need a few pluses to keep their stars in check. Thanks, Bryce. Well, that's all for Pioneer Headlines. I'm Nathan Grisham. And I'm Charlie with Bryson Sports. Thanks for watching.